This is it. This is the final show of the fantasy footballers before the championship week is over. Your last minute start sit decisions and a shame at the end. We got a great show for you. Make sure you subscribe. Stay with us all off season and come back on Monday with those hashtag foot clan titles. Welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers back with you. Friday episode. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, still with us. I showed up, everybody. Jason Moore is here. Howdy doody. <laughs> Andy Holloway with you. Uh, last episode of the show before our champions are crowned. So, wow. here we are. Do we have a shirt up? We do. Okay. I didn't even, um, yeah, this, this morning, uh, Andy Schneider, our designer, he, he said, any reason I shouldn't put the shirt up right now? I said, no, get it up there. Yeah, you know. We I, need a championship shirt. That we should have put it up last week because I've been hearing more and more uh, like, oh, I won my championship last week. And that's like, wait, what? Mm. But I forget that there are a handful of leagues that you know, when the season was seventeen weeks and your championship was week sixteen, they just kept it as week sixteen when they extended to eighteen weeks. And so, yeah, if you need uh, you know to swag out, shopballers uh, dot com, and you can get the Foot Clan title T shirt. He actually made two of them. He made he made like a we have a Foot Clan title shirt, and then we have a retro title shirt, which kind of looks like oh. those old. Uh, NCAA championship t-shirts that you would get for like, you know, uh, when the, the national title was won, he made one of those for the foot clan title as well. He scrolled down a little bit there, Jay. Um, oh, okay. That's but there's, fine. there's a couple of, uh, championship shirts available. If you want to celebrate, I hope to be purchasing some of those. Yeah. And if you want, uh, trophies or rings, fantasychamps.com. That's right. Uh, what else is going on? We've got a game to recap. Uh there's oh, oh there's man. some things that happened last night. We some some days we get into the studio <laughs> and we you know we we try to hit record at the same time every day, and, but it's hard. I mean we we are all in it and we want to talk. You know the the producers uh, ourselves we want to talk about what happened. And there are some days I'm just like shut up, shut up, don't talk. Let's just hit record mm -hmm. because I want to react together. And today was one of those days because Mike was living in just a world of. Terror, misery, and hypocrisy. And I, I say hypocrisy because of what Jason pointed out this morning, that yesterday you were, it's about the process. You yeah. need, you got to get the process yeah. right, then you can live with the results. Yeah, yeah, something that you can be truly and totally yeah. comfortable with, where it's like, if it doesn't work, you're fine because you really understood the, the reason. Yeah. But in the end, it, it oh, doesn't I, matter. No, I, I, I tweeted about, <laughs> I said, uh, not even the process can save me from what I am feeling right now. So let's, uh, let's, let's yes. talk about what that is. Joe, so, Joe Flacco and the Browns. Superman. If you missed it, Joe Flacco is the greatest quarterback, uh, in the NFL right now. 100%. Uh, at least for the first half. Doesn't of it. need Amari Cooper. And <laughs> doesn't need to throw 40 times. You kept saying he was going to throw I yeah. thought, against the jets. There's no way he throws 49, 29 attempts. That's it. Be, yeah, because they shut it down in the second half. So, 300 yards. 303. Three touchdowns. Basically, <sighs> I think he had about 7 to 15 yards in the second half. So you basically had a first half where Joe Flacco threw for 303 against the Jets defense that um, – Never gives up that much. No, they give up 168 yards. The process, Mike, the process yes. Yes. said – You were still – Let me let me put it this way. For those of you out there, because I know – you're out there. Um, those that benched Joe Flacco like Mike did, those that benched Jerome Ford because you were worried about the rushing uh, totals. You know, there there was this temptation through the afternoon. Mike was just analyzing, 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 analyzing. 
And I think you got to the point where you were thinking about it. But at about 5 o'clock, an hour before the game out here, we got word that Amari Cooper was not going to play. And I had made the decision in our league to bench him. In fact, I cut him at about 4 o'clock and uh, tweeted about that, said, look, I'm not going to play him, so I'm going to cut him, get the roster spot. I'm out on Amari Cooper. And I knew my night was going to be filled with terror because – now I have to watch this game and hope that Amari Cooper doesn't do well. Well, no, I didn't because Amari Cooper got ruled out. So now Joe Flacco doesn't even have his superstar, Mike. Yeah, it made the decision to bench Joe Flacco extremely easy. Well, because it's obvious. Because he's, he's against the, the worst matchup that he could be against right now. Doesn't have his number one wide receiver. And then it took him, what, three minutes? <laughs> three minutes to score a touchdown immediately just... Hot knife through butter. Yeah, I think ten the minutes to score his third touchdown. I, it was it was truly an unbelievable performance uh, by Joe Flacco. David Njoku had 128 receiving yards in the first quarter. My favorite tweet of the night might have been, and I uh, see if you can find this, Kyle, so I can source it. It was somebody pointing out like David Njoku's, and he's year seven, uh, best yardage games. And there was like there was one up at number one, which wasn't last night. And the second one was ten minutes with Joe Flacco. <laughs> David Njoku had uh, you know four catches for over hundred yards just to start the game. Yeah, that that was uh, um, oh, it was Yankee. Yeah, Nathan okay. Yankee. Uh, it, week five do in twenty twenty one. Do we? I always say his name wrong. Is it Yankee or is it? Uh, I, we know? I, yeah, I think it's uh, Yonke. Uh, Sorry, Nate. Nate yeah. from PFF. He's great. I just yeah. Don't I mean, if you name. had an easier to pronounce last name, we'd get it right. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'd bring it's, you up it's, way more. It's on you. That's on you. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's so. Your, it's on your family. The game was. It was, this strange mixed bag of, being very correct and very incorrect. Like, the I, I, the second half they, uh, you know, they shut it down. Joe Flacco, Andy, you said he had, I don't know, like 20 passing yards. So the the regret could have been so, so much worse. So His first half was think, basically his final fantasy total. He had about yeah. 32 in the first half. He finished with 32 in our league. But it's The like, game got reset to what we expected in the second half, which was a pathetic offensive yeah. performance by the Jets despite a big deficit. Dump, 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 dumpity dump. Yeah, or, and and the Browns. I mean, they, they scored three second-half points. Both both at teams least, scored three second at half. At least points. you understand why. Like the Jets, they were up by so much. The Browns, I understand having a different offensive philosophy in the second half. That's they to were, me. I'm not. I'm not surprised that they would want to turtle up and just not make mistakes. It's not like Flacco didn't throw a pick six. Right. But the they Jets were, were in embarrassment. They were up so much that Joe Flacco was falling asleep <laughs> on the sideline. If you've not seen the clip, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. Like. It looks like the man. No, he was falling asleep. Is falling asleep. He, he was a reporter tired from a long him, night's work. Uh, from a short night's work, he a reporter asked him about falling asleep yeah. on the sideline, and he asked the reporter. He, he's, he's like, "No, he goes, did I do that?" <laughs> <laughs> like, but it was like so genuine. It wasn't a joke. It was like, I mean, this is an old man but, who got tired at the end of a of a football game. Brees Hall was a great play. Jason was right about both defenses. They both yeah, scored. Yeah, they both scored. We saw a, a good handful of tweets of people who actually made like a very nice return on, uh, on on putting that down. Garrett Wilson was not a good play. So, no, no, he wasn't. Hey, got that one. Yeah, you benched him. You didn't play Flacco. And um, it's funny because like once you make the decision not to play Fac Flacco, Mike. Yep. Like. The net result for your team is is irrelevant. Like if Joe Flacco scores five points or fifty, you don't get them. Correct. And yet, and yet, I'm sure you were thrilled that he didn't throw two more second half touchdowns. Yes, for yes. your own emotional health. Yeah, it was. It was going into the half. What with, did you with, say in our channel? You said something. I don't. I don't even remember. I man. mean, you were blacking out. I was in a dark, dark place. I think it was something like "I am dead" or yeah, yeah. No, I. It was. Uh, it was. It was a bad moment. We got look. Especially, I mean, it's compounded, right? It was, I'm telling people. I hate my life. Yeah. 738. Yeah, there we go. There we go. 738 right. I'm, I mean, the people who come to us for advice, come to me for advice, I'm like, I'm not playing Joe Flacco. Yeah, you put your. So, I've, you know, that, and that's what I want to get right more than anything. And then on top of that, 
in my championship match where I made that decision, it feels extra bad. The great news is, one, it ended up just being three hundred three. <laughs> like if they had, if they had <laughs> seriously, with it, a with an interception and two fumbles, if they had gone into the second half and Joe's at three fifty and four or five, it would have just been catastrophic nightmare. But if you had another option, they at least can give you. 80% of what Joe Flacco put up in a half against the Jets. Is there a team you're rooting for more in the playoffs? No. Uh, I want to watch the world burn. <laughs> let's get, let's go, Super Bowl, Joe. <laughs> I mean, Kevin Stefanski, holding this team together with the injuries that they've had, they lost Nick Chubb. They lost their quarterbacks. Every single time they show Kevin Stefanski, I'm like, that's Joe Flacco. Every, I just right, see Joe yeah. Flacco. Which they are almost the same age. So, And, I mean, how – how good did Joe Flacco feel beating yeah. the crap out of the Jets? Yeah. I mean, he's just like, – The Jets deserved that. Like, they left Joe Flacco, who yeah, go had ahead. been go. in their system, when they needed a quarterback desperately because they had a great defense. Their general manager was like, nah, dude, we're good with Zach Wilson. And that's fine to do week one when – you know, yes. it, Keep in mind, yeah. it was week one. Week one, when Aaron Rodgers went down, you had so much time to fix this problem with your great defense. And Joe Flacco on this team with Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall, they're they're Super Bowlish bound. They're playoff. I mean, they're the they're the Browns. They're literally <laughs> the Browns at this point. You deserve this. Yeah, I mean, if you if you say, "Hey Zach, paint me a picture for one week," that's cool. Then you see the picture. But when you ask him to keep painting, like, Zach. You Zach this is the same picture you painted last year. Yeah, and then you just keep We've hanging, already them, seen keep hanging them on the wall? <laughs> yeah, that's delusion. Stop with finger painting. Use a brush. So, yeah, it's um, – uh, yeah, the Jerome Ford performance, it was two receiving touchdowns for Ford. Yeah. Uh, they – you know, he was pretty good on the ground as well, but just 12 attempts, and they salted that one away in the second Oof. half. So, it is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. It's a good opportunity to thank everybody that has supported the show. For sure. For many years over at jointhefoot.com. We appreciate all of you. Hey, if you came back this morning after last night's debacle, thank you. Thank you. And uh, every Friday we give away a $100 gift card to fantasychamps.com to one of you. And today's winner, your username, <laughs> Soft Tissue Issues, mm. which uh, you got you to watch out for. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, I think we notice the older we get, the more soft tissue issues. Yeah, the, the tissue is getting softer. Yeah, that's, all, <laughs> is that all the tissue problem? is getting softer. Yeah. All right. Congratulations. Yeah. $100 to fantasychamps.com. Oh, and, and uh, remember when you use that, you can still, even though it's a gift card, you can still use free ring. What? Yeah. So okay. uh, put, a, put a trophy and a championship ring in your cart and use the code free ring. You will get a $60 ring for free. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the, the hits kept coming all afternoon. A lot of illnesses right now. Kyler Murray, Ezekiel Elliott didn't practice due to illness. Kenneth Walker didn't practice due to shoulder and illness. Illness going Everybody's around. Everybody's throwing up. All of our producers didn't show up yesterday due to illness. Or not our producers, our uh, yeah, programming team. All right, Josh Jacobs hasn't practiced Wednesday and Thursday with the quad injury. Not a good sign they for were, Sunday availability. They were both walkthroughs, but you still have to say what you believe would happen if you had a practice. So, I mean, we, we saw last week he missed practice all week, and then lo and behold, he wasn't active. He's the morning game against Indianapolis, a great matchup. Samir White, a great play if he is inactive, which we expect, I think. Is that the fair? I, I'm not um, at the point where I expect it yet. Today's practice that's an actual practice will determine it for me. All right. Uh, Keenan Allen has not been practicing either. That's one where we expect him to sit down? Correct. Josh Palmer still not practicing due to concussion. They're out of wideouts. They're actually going to be lining up. Quentin the Johnston. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. Is he in your lineup for DFS? Stay tuned. Uh, oh, that's wow. later today. Wow. Spoiler, he is not. Oh, oh okay. No, come on. Jay's is like, don't accuse me of such. I thought you were getting huge. No, I I haven't lost in a while. I, 
I don't put players like huge in there. Michael Pittman returned to a full practice on Thursday. So That's he great. should be back from the yep. concussion if no more symptoms. Trevor Lawrence didn't practice due to the shoulders. A Flowers. Let's talk about this. Wednesday, Thursday, calf injury. No Zay Flowers. Are you concerned? This was a Monday. He did play Monday night. So you could it's, maybe look to today's practice as your as your firm yeah. indication. Yep. The the eyebrows are definitely up. Looking for today's practice report. If I mean, as long as we're limited today, then it's there should be no problem and Zay is in. But don't don't shut down the news. Like pay attention. CJ Stroud back. That's great. He will be starting. And uh, DK Metcalf didn't practice due to a back injury. Could just be maintenance. We'll find out. Isaiah Pacheco hasn't practiced with the concussion. So we're not expecting Pacheco. Is that no, fair? That That is yeah. fair. And then Clyde, one of the uh, uh, players missing with illness. Even if, I mean, if he comes back, he's he's still going to be in. Because the the Chiefs, is, is on the active roster, it's LaMichael Pirine. And then guys on their practice squad that they may have to go to. This guy's like Keontae Ingram. So if Clyde is good to play, which I imagine he will be, I'm still going to play him. All right, then our illustrious Deucer team over there will be checking the news wire throughout today's episode for any breaking news, practice reports, which we might get some before the end of the show. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Yesterday, we... All my troubles. <laughs> <laughs> Far away. <laughs> Lions and Cowboys, we covered that game. The Patriots, Bills, Falcons, Bears, Raiders, Colts, Rams, Giants, Cardinals, Eagles, Saints, Buccaneers. Those games we took care of. You can You can scroll back, click on yesterday's show. Jason's typing so furiously right now. Yeah, what is going on? That I he's either searching for news. Then let me let me tell you what he could be doing. Okay, he's give me the list. Searching for news. Mm -hmm. That's not my leader in the clubhouse. Okay, my leader in the clubhouse is Uber Eats. Is he trying? <laughs> okay, all right, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Cheeseburger. Lay off me! I'm starving. Um, no, there's more clicking with Uber Eats, right? <laughs> not typing. <laughs> well, what do you got to search? You got to search. I assumed it was something related to like a mid game, a mid show DFS pivot. No, no, no. I I told you earlier. I'm locked. My lineup. Oh, that's is true. You locked. did say that. Okay. It's not great, but it is locked. Well, you say that every week. You're on a hot streak. All right, let's start here with this San Francisco 49er Washington Commander matchup. 49ers 11 and four. Commanders the inverse at four and 11. The DraftKings Sportsbook line on the road. San Francisco minus 12 and a half. The over-under is 50 points. That is a high over-under because the 49ers are projected with almost, what, 31 and a half points? Mm -hmm. Nice. When I saw this line, I was like, wow. That is a large spread. You're at home, the commanders, with Jacoby Brissett, and they've looked a little better with Brissett. Um, and so I, I clicked on the... Manders side of this line given that they were at home in such a big spread and that lasted about 90 seconds for nah that's not what am I talking about the Niners are gonna roll them honestly if you were counting on the Brock Purdy Christian McCaffrey Debo IU Kittle universe you were gonna play them anyways yeah but the fact that they're coming off a loss that makes me even more excited for those guys because Shanahan off a loss you know he crushes the team implied total Washington, it, it, you just can't. They're like the Cardinals. Like teams just do what they want on them. We talked about it yesterday, but I think it was on the footcast. I believe, Mike, you are the only one that remembers things around here. I don't remember yesterday. Um, yesterday. It was. <laughs> it was that Christian McCaffrey is in the championship game of like over fifty percent, or right around fifty percent, depending on your league format, of teams that drafted Christian McCaffrey, or at least who have them on the roster now are in the championship game. That's an insanely high number that I'm not used to seeing. But the fact that that many people are have Christian McCaffrey in the championship game and it's the commanders, I feel like if you drafted Christian McCaffrey, you have a 50% chance to win your title this year. Like, it, you guys I'd are in a matchup where 50. Christian McCaffrey yeah. is in that game. I think I know who's going to yeah. win the matchup. 
the one with Christian McCaffrey. And that would be which one of us, Mike? Uh, that would be you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hey, what does it feel like to know you've got all these start sit decisions? Look, man, what is what is dead may never die. <laughs> I'm already gone. I, I think the I think the only like recourse is like a, a voodoo doll or something. That's oh, I thought you were gonna say playing Joe Flacco. You got to get yeah, that would have worked. No, it's but black magic. That's it. The if you're against Christian McCaffrey, your only hope is that they get super cute and Debo gets rushing touchdowns. Well, we were saying yesterday, looking at Christian McCaffrey's average points per game, you know, you're really you're praying for twenty points from Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. As the opponent. As the opponent. Yeah. Yes. Like if you're facing him, you're like, I want twenty. Twenty would be amazing because it's under his average. It's probably one touchdown. Otherwise you're you're in catastrophe land. It's, it's not a guarantee, obviously. I mean Brock Purdy could could pass for four touchdowns easily and they could go to Ayuk and Debo and Kittle and look, player forty ers the end. Yep. On the other side, possibly some optimism for Terry McLaurin and company. And I would say Curtis Samuel had six targets. Both of those players with Jacoby Brissett starting could be what I would call garbage time heroes in this game. Uh, the 49ers are, look, they're going to be ahead by a lot. And Jacoby Brissett is competent, unlike and, Sam Howell right now. And Jacoby Brissett targets... Terry McLaurin a lot he is the first read and he's willing to let it go on that first read even sometimes when he shouldn't um Terry McLaurin is a guy that I think is a is a decent play this week you know if you've got um a bad matchup like if you had Garrett Wilson yesterday and you had to bench him I think Terry McLaurin's the type of player that would be uh someone you could go with I also think Antonio Gibson is a fine flex option while you might be getting Brian Robinson back He's coming back from a hamstring, and it's not a guarantee that he's active this week. Would you play Antonio Gibson, or where are we going here? Ty Chandler, I assume, over Gibson? Yes. Yeah, Chandler. Okay. Clyde over Gibson? Yes. Yeah, probably. All right, the Carolina Panthers at 2-13 and 13 take on the 8-7 and seven and injured Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville minus 6 is the line right now. Kyle, if you want to confirm that hasn't changed, over-under is 38 we might not have Trevor Lawrence, although in recent weeks, he just plays. He just plays through injury. They certainly do not have Christian Kirk. They don't have Zay Jones, or at least we don't think they will. They could, but he's been dealing with injury. Uh, Evan Ingram, he's a must start because he is just getting targeted like crazy. I, I had this quick moment. Let me, let me muse on this with David Njoku and Evan Ingram because we've joked about, look, seven years in, they're the player we expected. Seven years. And it threw into question, in my mind, at tight end specifically, we always say targets are an earned stat. Mm -hmm. Is that a lie with tight ends? Because I don't think Evan Ingram and David Njoku have, you know, these are first-round draft picks. I don't think that they're, it took seven years for them to materialize into target earners in the offense. Maybe a year or two for tight end. But to me, it just came down. When I watched David Njoku streaking down the field last night or what Ingram has done this year, I just started thinking, like, at tight end, the utilization seems to be everything. Like, the fact that teams basically ruin some of these. I mean, Trey McBride, you loved him. Mm -hmm. That was, was he not earning targets with Cliff Kingsbury? Well, you still have to have the opportunity to earn targets if you're not on the field. And you're playing thirty percent of snaps, but I do get what but you're Ingram saying. But Ingram and like, Njoku were on the field. Yeah, the the opportunity for tight ends. It's easier for tight ends to uh, receive a target, but those are they're just not the first reads in the offense. Usually, you're going. But that's dumb, at the, right? With these guys, it was dumb. Yeah, you should have been targeting them for years, right? Uh, to to some degree, I I I do agree. I mean, it's more efficient to throw the ball to a wide receiver than to a tight end, generically speaking. But with like Njoku's been so valuable after the catch where so, yeah it's like do that you yeah. could have done that for years like watching him run down the field like David Njoku is the number one tight end for the majority of the season that's what happened this year and he, you could have been doing that for more than your seventh season I saw a friend of the show Paul Charchian tweeting out like what is the single read for those that are in the championship what's the single move that you made this year that put you there. And there were people like, oh, I drafted Tyreek or Christian McCaffrey. But one of the most common things I saw was I picked up David Njoku like 
five weeks ago. Who, mm-hmm. Whoever picked up Najoku, and, and credit to Andy, Andy both did and really hammered uh, that on the show of like his schedule the rest of the way is unbelievably perfect for tight ends. Um, I think you're, you know, the, the, the co-managed team that I've got with the biggest loser in the championship, we've got Najoku. He's really carried teams yeah. the second half of this season. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, sorry, we'll get back to the game. Sure. Dave, uh, Evan Ingram, you play him. Travis Etienne, the matchup is is one that you want to get him in there. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm not – I think we're differing in the fact that, like, Calvin Ridley, to me, because of the lack of other options – to me, I'm playing him regardless of quarterback. But I think you were less I, comfortable with Beathard. I am more hesitant. I mean, with I, he's an okay play because he is so necessary in the targets. But when you look at what the Panthers give up, they don't give up a lot to wide receivers. I think Calvin Ridley is just a, a fine flex option. McLaurin I don't expect, or Ridley? Yeah, I would go McLaurin there. Okay. And, and – um, they're they're both okay. I th- I think they're the same tier. I don't see McLaurin as like clearly better than Ridley. If you like Ridley better and he's had bigger games, that's fine. But they're in the same tier of like a flex option where you don't have to bench them this week. Uh, but I Travis Etienne's going to have the touchdowns. He, I mean, I feel like I should go bet two touchdowns Travis Etienne right now. Mike, uh, other side of the ball. We saw signs of life last week. We actually had a big right. game from DJ Chark. We had a big game for Adam Thielen. Uh, we had Chuba Hubbard, who's getting 23 opportunities a week, who, after I named him start of the week, decided to be limited in practice with a hamstring injury. Ooh. But he's been a top 24 running back five consecutive weeks in Jacksonville. You can run on them. Yeah, yeah. Chuba is in, assuming that he is healthy and ready to go. And... Should we be picking up Miles Sanders in leagues to either block mm. or to play if Chuba doesn't play? That's today's report matters a lot. Yeah, if you go to today's report and he's still hobbled, it's not the worst idea. I don't. It's more of a. I was gonna say I I don't really want to play Miles Sanders. But would you then if if there's a player that you don't want to play, do you want to block him? You just want to remove the. The variance that Miles Sanders actually well, has a good game. I I guess the, the it depends on your opponent. Or right? would you rather them play Miles Sanders against? Well, you? that's the question I'm asking. Is like, do you believe? Let's say Chuba's gone. Is Miles Sanders actually a good play for fantasy? He would be. The way be, that they're running be, the ball, so he would much. be an okay start. But there is Gibson or upside. Miles Sanders if he started. I think uh, I'd go Miles Sanders in that one. Yeah, I would too. I would as well. So then Just that means we volume. should be picking him up. Yeah, to block so him. you could block. So Thielen is a, a start sit question for people yeah, in PPR half PPR leagues because last week there was a bit of a resurgence in terms of utilization. Well, Bryce Young actually had a good game, six for ninety four last week for Thielen. He hasn't scored since before the bye, but you know he could. That's what they say about him. <laughs> <laughs> and and the matchup is there. So if if you have if you're in the uh, situation, Hopkins where, or Thielen? Hopkins. Yeah, I'd go Hopkins. But it, Dorch but, or Thielen? Oh, Thielen. Thielen. I'm saying if you're if you are in that camp where you've Thielen kind of or been Flacco. switching Adam <laughs> Thielen in, <laughs> uh, always the quarterback. Uh, that Thielen is he's an okay flex. All right, quick break. Back with another matchup. I was just realizing this show might go so long with all the big matchups this week. We might not have time for the wheel of shame or anything. Mm. Did you guys realize that? I mean, I got nothing but time. Jay, you good? I'm I I don't want to go anywhere yeah. until we get the shame done. Any updates on Lattimore for us? Uh, it appears he is not 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 going to play. Not not not. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Miami's eleven and four. Baltimore's twelve and three. We're excited for this Here one. Here we go. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Baltimore minus three and a half. The over under is forty seven. The winner will be in the driver's seat for the number one seed, the buy in the AFC. Uh, this game. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm a little worried about it from a fantasy side of things. Like, I, I would okay. take the under on the 47. I'm going to mm, put it that way. Okay. The pass rush for both teams, ferocious. The quarterbacks, they've been up and down this year. You take weapons away from Tua, we've seen struggles at times. And and you didn't take the big one away. Tyreek Hill will be, will be there. But you did take Jalen Waddle out of this equation. 
And I have spent most of this week trying to determine the beneficiary in that offense. You know, some I think some people would want to run to Cedric Wilson in DFS. For me, I actually think that the sneakiest start of the week it's not Cedric Wilson. It's not Chase Claypool or Braxton Berrios or River Craycraft because some ensemble will fill in the gap at wide receiver beyond Tyreek Hill. It's Durham Smythe. Oh, no. I think Durham Smythe. Oh, no. Who we, and I'll, I'll tell you right now. That's a DraftKings lineup. That's in my DraftKings yeah. lineup. Because Durham Smythe has, has been involved when these injuries have transpired in the most recent weeks. The pass rush will necessitate some shorter to the line of scrimmage. Last week, 5 for 56. For Durham Smythe on eighty five percent of snaps, so I'm just I'm gonna throw it out there. I'm gonna throw it out there to the world. I okay. think it's, it's something that if you want, I, I, what is he in DraftKings? He's got to be so cheap, twenty nine hundred. Yeah. I think. So okay, if you want to do that, that's fine. But this is not a play for your championship lineups. Well, I mean, look, I'd play him over Dalton Kincaid. Hoo hoo. So spicy. I I'm would just not. look implied point total of twenty one. Uh, they're gonna try to run the football, obviously. Tough to do against the Ravens, number one on the year. Season uh, schedule adjusted against running backs. So Mostert, you're obviously playing them. A-Chan, you're probably playing them. But it doesn't mean they're going to have success on the road against Baltimore's defense. And if you get down to Baltimore, who is favored, you're going to have to throw the football. So, uh, look, I don't want to make this about Durham Smythe. Let's make this about Tyree Kill still being a start. Um, but I'm concerned about Tua. I'm concerned about Lamar. So I don't know if this game's going to be as high scoring as people would hope. Yeah, I I would uh, I would concur that these are two great defenses um, and and two great offenses. These these are two of the best teams in the league. Flowers is the guy that you want to play, but if for some reason he is inactive, I don't think you could trust Bateman. He's he has fallen from yeah from just being good to an irrelevant NFL player faster and more surprisingly never good than, yeah maybe never, never good, good maybe never good but supposed to be good a first yeah, round supposed pick, to be good but also did have flashes like he was injured a lot he but caught then some bombs early in his career he caught these bombs and looked like he showed the flashes you want to see he just wasn't on the field then he gets on the field and is like would you say he was drafted to be great yeah for sure he was drafted to be great all first rounders are drafted to be great would you would you also i mean i'm looking <laughs> he is not finished in top 36 even one time this year. No, he's he's not good. So I won't trust him no matter what. But does that mean if Flowers is gone and Bateman sucks that you could trust Odell Beckham? You can play Odell Beckham. You cannot yeah. trust him. Okay. Yep. And, and, and Isaiah I, Likely is very solid. I, Isaiah Likely, I think, is a great play. I mean, everything you're saying about Smythe is true of Likely. Oh, yeah, except, Likely. Except Likely is actually way better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Smythe is, Smythe is the um, – I got no one left to throw to tight end option. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Zay Flowers will, will monitor that situation. The running backs, Justice Hill, he'll get the most snaps. Gus Edwards will probably get the most valuable snaps. If you had to choose between those two to play, would you go Gus Bus touchdown? Yeah. Mm, yeah, I lean that way. <laughs> oh. One more week, Gus. Get in the end zone. Lamar Jackson, if he's your quarterback that got you here, you're obviously playing him. Tua. Are you actively trying to bench him for some of those streaming options like Derek Carr, uh, Baker Mayfield, Geno Smith? Um, I would be willing to do that, yeah. yeah. Jared Goff or Tua? Ooh. Pretend that we um, just added Goff to your roster, Mike. <laughs> uh, Goff or Tua, I would – I think I'd go Goff. Uh, I would as well. I've got Goff, Carr, Baker – and Gino all right literally the spots ahead of Tua. Uh, I don't think Tua is an absolute flat-out must bench, but I believe there are better options. This is a very difficult matchup. Without Waddle, you're going to have to have some things go right, and it's easy. I mean, a screen pass to Devon H. and that goes yep. for 70 yards, yep. you're going to be happy. So that's why he's not a must bench. Uh, but I think the expectation, we've seen too many games from Tua this year that are very, very low fantasy scoring games because – it's just how it can happen with this offense. So I would rather take the streaming options that look like they have better matchups this week. Kyle would like to let you know that, you know, remind <laughs> you that Tua went 469 and six against Baltimore last year. And I believe that was week one or two of the season. <sighs> Did he really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a little ways, different Baltimore defense. Ways ago. That stat only hurts, Kyle. It hurts people. 
Well, I don't know. I believe yesterday he was the one talking about um, Amari Cooper's big game against the Jets, kind of propping up Flacco. Yeah, yeah. Except for I, I asked him later. I go, you'd bench Cooper. I'm going to bench him. That's the right call, right? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. I know he was a genius. Well, it was a genius. Uh, he's yeah. a genius. He's got zero yeah. points. You always sit the inactive players. That's what I've. That's part of our show's kind of. Yeah, we we philosophy. say this. Take yeah. them out of your flex. Yeah, always. <laughs> you know, take your inactive players out of the flex. That's yeah, right. that's one of Jason's. And things. out of your other spots. Other spots. Yep. Um, bye week players as well. I guess that's inactive. Yeah. yeah. Tennessee five and ten. Houston eight and seven. Divisional matchup. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Houston at home minus four. Over unders forty four points. Texans still in the playoff picture. Are they eight and seven right now? They're still they're eight and seven. What a year! Yeah, bravo! It's, it's been it's been impressive work. C.J. Stroud back at practice, back in lineups. Yeah, I, I I think so. Um, C.J. Stroud is among those. Like I would play C.J. Stroud over Tua. Uh, C.J. Stroud is um. It's an okay matchup. It's really a great matchup for wide receivers, and it's an okay matchup for quarterbacks against the Tennessee Titans. But this is a very important game for them. They are at home. There is um, usually for most positions coming off of a concussion is you're right back to pre-concussion um, performance. Uh, I know that that's true for wide receivers and running backs. I do have like a little like hesitation we've seen a couple bad performance you know Tua last year was sure. obvious but if, <clears throat> I I think you're fine to play uh Stroud and and he's got Nico back the big one is Fields in Stroud because they're ranked closely for us That's on the web, on the me. website and you're a Fields versus Atlanta I am a Fields ahead of Stroud by one spot in my rankings <laughs> right exactly it's close it's very close um Atlanta's a, a not a great <laughs> Uh, they are a pretty solid defense as far as restricting the other offenses. Partially, that's because of Atlanta's offense. Um, but I, I just want the legs of Fields. Like, Devin, I, I want them. I wish you would like legs. to oh, replace yeah, your great. legs with Dude, another man's legs. I would do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> Give me Justin Fields' legs. You would look different. Yeah, but I'd be on. Watch me run. I wouldn't even. When I come from my desk uh, into the studio, I would be running every time because I'd be like. Would you Check wear, out what I can do. Would you wear pants? No. Okay. I'd be in a Speedo. <laughs> uh, Devin Singletary had 31 opportunities against Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. Last week got game scripted out. They got blown out of the building. Uh, Houston had did not have C.J. Stroud, and they were down to the to the Browns like 34 to 7 or something. So he only got 44% of snaps last week. Was great on them. Is Devin Singletary... Uh, Someone you're endorsing this week with yeah. C.J. Stroud. Yep, I'm playing him as an RB2. Yeah, I would take him over to those other running backs we talked about earlier, the the Gibson tier guys. And Nico Collins, Noah Brown, Robert Woods, Dalton Schultz. How do you look at the pass catchers, the wide receiver room? Uh, the Titans are weak against wideouts. Stroud's back. Collins and Brown at the top of your list, or is it uh, just Collins? No, I, I, I like Collins. I like Noah Brown. Uh, Dalton Schultz gets the targets. It's not a great matchup for tight ends, but uh, I he's had enough targets, especially from C.J. Stroud, where you go, okay, he's a he's a fine enough play. I I'm went not going to play Smythe over him. I, I, was, I went a little too hard on the Durham Smythe, didn't I? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> you're not going to play him in a championship game. No, no, you're not. I mean, generally bringing up the name Durham Smythe is going too hard. Well, we do have a little bit of an inside joke here at the studio. Yeah. When a when a white tight end catches a pass and we don't know who it is, we do – for any team, we're like, who caught that? And then you're like, Smythe. Yeah. Because he's there and he's a tight end. Was he, because he was like stealing all of Gasicki's targets. <laughs> we we don't know the tight end's name. is just Smythe. <laughs> he's just Smythe. Uh, on the other Smythe. side, Derek Henry – Tajay Spears, DeAndre Hopkins. Those are your conversation pieces. And, uh, I mean, I'm, you're playing Derrick Henry. You're really hoping it goes better than the last time. You've, got a, met. you've got a greater than 50% chance that it goes very well. Right now, this, Burlington, Vermont has a 51% chance of snow. But that's Saturday. 
Well, this game's Sunday. Yeah. Snow, it, on it, it, snow on the ground. Snow on the ground. Is, is, that's all you need. It just needs to be on the ground. Okay. It that is. So the Vermont. We need Vermont to stay cold. Is there a depth? But that means you'll know, right? If this is Saturday, we'll know come Sunday if there's snow on the ground. All right. And if you're unfamiliar, the when it snows in Vermont, it's a hundred percent correlative hit rate uh, with so, Derrick Henry having a so monster outside game. of snow related analysis, Derrick Henry had a one of the worst games of the of his career against Houston. He scored three fantasy points on twenty opportunities. Not just two his career. Weeks ago, it's not just his career. It's one of the worst games historically ever seen, ever imagined. He had sixteen carries well, me, and four receptions, and he didn't get to fifteen yards. So if that's what happened, and Texans, they're the number one defense against the run over the last six weeks. Number one, they're at home. The game script is not favoring Derrick Henry. So let's let's be real for a second. Let me. If you have Devin Singletary and Derrick Henry, and you're going into this lineup, I'm you're playing, going into this matchup. Who are you playing? I'm playing Derrick Henry. I would play Derrick. Henry. Uh, Derrick now, Singletary's been a better running back. I no, think, over the I over, mean, since you, week ten. Uh, I, I mean, since if, he took over the starting job. Let's see here. The, Let, the, let's find the out last, if I'm lying because I might be. I was just well, out of my, week, out of my week butt. ten and eleven were down weeks for Derrick Henry. So depending on where you slice it off, I'm just I'm just slicing it where but where Singletary w- took over. Week but. twelve, week thirteen, week fourteen, all three. Derrick Henry was a top ten running back last week. He was a top five running back. He's they're been, they're the same. Thirteen point four, thirteen point six. Yeah. So yeah, I look, Mike. Are you in that boat too? Yeah, I would go Derrick Henry really? because it's. I mean, it could be also be your matchup, but Derrick Henry between the two of them is more likely to have the spike week. Yeah, where, he has seven touchdowns in the last five weeks. Like, I get it. It's it, and it's not a, um, it's not a slight against Devin Singletary. It's it's in my championship matchup. I want the running back who is more likely to get two touchdowns. And, I just and wanted they, to, and they keep I wanted to press throw. you. I wanted to press you. Yeah, no, um, I, it's worth the conversation because that game was such a tragedy will levis full practice i just i'm just oh really i did not yeah that's all right i think that's very good news for deandre hopkins hopkins is such a difficult player to trust i mean you you literally have in the last seven weeks you have four times not when he was kind of okay but four times when he was outside the top 50 okay Mm -hmm. so those were full on i you hurt your team by playing him and then there were three games in the top 15 in that span, including the big game with Levis against Miami. So I believe the way that I'm... It's a little I'm, nerve-wracking. I, I totally get it. The way that I am viewing the outcome of this game is that C.J. Stroud is going to ball out. I think Nico Collins and Noah Brown have really, really good games. If that happens, that means that the Titans are going to have to throw... It, you can throw pretty easily on the, the, uh, on the Texans as well. So... Hopkins, if he has banana rama at quarterback, I think he's a good play this week. All right. Um Pittsburgh, eight and seven, Seattle eight and seven, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Seattle minus three and a half at home. Over unders forty one. Both teams fighting for wild card spots. Steelers heard us talking about them not being above five hundred on the year. Came out and dominated with Mason Rudolph because Mike Tomlin. So and Cincinnati. We have some... Don't, don't discredit what Cincinnati did in that I, performance. I blinked. I blinked in that game. Like, I hadn't seen much going on there. And then I was like, whoa, what, <laughs> what happened? How are the Steelers at 21 points? So how are you breaking down this matchup? Because uh, the over-under is low. It's 41. We have some injury news. Like, DK Metcalf, he didn't practice Thursday. I don't know how concerned we are because he's had limited practices with the back throughout the year. Kenneth Walker didn't practice. He he dealing with the shoulder and the illness, and he seems to be doing that lately. He didn't practice all last week, and then he played, right? He did, but he played not very effectively. Yeah, he played poorly. Well, the matchup on paper against the Steelers over the course of the year has been good for running backs. Um, the Steelers are weird because sometimes they just show up. Yeah, they 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 are a, a very strange defense. You you've seen them shut people down, and and this is part of why they have eight wins on the season. And every now and then they just don't seem that great and very uh, very beatable. For this matchup, I really, really like Jackson Smith and Jigba. I think that you know you, the, the Steelers have been killed by the slot wide receiver pretty much yeah, all season. Fair. You've that got a bang. also for just 
forever. Yeah, forever. But you've got a banged up Metcalf, and I, I think JSN is is a is a pretty solid play. Um, obviously, if Metcalf is out, I think Lockett you could play. Walker is going to be if in Metcalf your lineup is no in, matter what. Lockett. That question is. I, I would stick with personally how I had it last week, which is Metcalf first, JSN second, Lockett third. I don't. I, I'm on the Lockett above JSN. So yeah, I'm, I'll still go there too. I mean, he's got 20 targets in two weeks, but. Uh, both in play. So are all three basically startable? Yes. I don't. This week? I don't know if I, I look at so. JSN that way. Really? No. No. I, I mean, I look at JSN as a, as J a JSN lower tier is, starter. is just not a yardage guy. So it's hard because he just doesn't. If he doesn't score, I don't think you're happy with JSN. And he hasn't scored much. That's, so that's fair. From the slot, you're not going to have as many opportunities to score. He was six for sixty-one last week, so it speaks to kind of the the lower efficiency per reception. But he has looked the part uh, i th i think i'm i'm betting on his talent uh i'd play curtis i'd play curtis samuel with jacoby Brissett over i would jackson smith and jigba okay but um that's the tier to me uh deontay johnson didn't do much with mason rudolph last week but had scored in three straight weeks and also mason yeah. missed him like there there was a play oh that's not surprising well he didn't miss george pickens but I said there was a there was a play where Deontay was running free and and Mason missed him and it would have been a sizable touchdown. George Pickens last week four for one twenty or one ninety five and two. What do you do? What do you do with Pickens? I think most people because I think they'll play him. Uh, but it's high risk, high reward. I don't think you look at. I think he's he is Gabe Davis. He's not just because he had a big game. Like every time Gabe Davis has a big game, we don't go. Well, he's locked and loaded for the rest of his career, and you certainly don't do it. And we don't do that with Josh Allen. So how do you do that on the road with Mason Rudolph? I don't think Pickens is a lock, but I, I would like the volatility in my lineup and the potential for okay, so, a big game. So uh, boom versus boom. Would you play Pickens or Gabe Davis? I would I would be playing Pickens and Gabe Davis if I'm an underdog in the championship. I'm, he's I'm saying, saying you which, got both which of those of the guys. Two? Who are you throwing in? Pickens. Okay. Yeah, but, I, but again, I would not play either one if I was a favorite. I would not be wanting to risk – basically a goose not on my just roster. A, not just a favorite. I think if you're in a in a somewhat even match, if you're within 10-point projection, I, I would rather not play George Pickens. George Pickens is in my lineup if I'm an underdog and I have to have a big blow-up performance. Jalen Warren has not been special since week 11. He is uh, under um, seven points per game over the last five games. Najee Harris been a little bit better in that stretch, I believe. At least last week he was the running back 18. Is your confidence level on the Najee side in this one, or is it on the Warren side? Yeah, it's it's definitely on the Najee or side. Or on the it's, neither side. It, I, I think I think Najee is a fine play. Um, the, the Seahawks have gotten better against the run, but the volume is there for Najee. He's not someone that, you know, I he's not Christian McCaffrey. He's never going to be confused for – some kind of super explosive, awesome vision running back, but that when when you're getting so often 19, 20 opportunities, it, that's just good for fantasy. One last question for you, real quick: Where does Charbonnet slot in if Kenneth Walker were to miss this game? Does he slot in above Zamir White against Indianapolis? Man, both both are good matchups, but Zamir White has been on fire, and his matchup is much better. So I would put Zamir ahead of Charbonnet. But don't hear what I'm not saying. If Charbonnet is alone and and Walker doesn't play, Charbonnet is a very good start. The Chargers are five and ten, taking on Jarrett Stidham's Denver Broncos, who are seven and eight. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Denver minus three point five. The over under is thirty seven. This morning in the uh, I was having my coffee at home. I shared a couple things with you guys. I found really old uh, Google Docs from like when this show started, like uh, you know, a long time ago. And I stumbled on my notes for Jarrett Stidham, really oh. for the draft. Which uh, note number one? I said smart cat, a smart guy, <laughs> smart. No, but well, you said cat. Yeah, I did you say I, I did write cat. I said okay. smart cat. Number two, I said NFL backup. <laughs> I said this guy, and he has been. He's been the prototypical backup. Did you did you make a note about destroyer of careers? Uh, you mm. mean like a contract assassin? Yeah. No, I didn't. Well, I didn't should expect. Have, oh, you did say smart cat though. Yeah, you know what? I did <laughs> oh, say. Yeah, I did say that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, his agent's doing good work. He's going to be the starter the rest of the year for the Denver Broncos. Easton Stick on the other side. I don't think we expected this matchup. 
is probably a quick one for fantasy purposes. You still have Cortland Sutton not practicing. Jerry Judy got three targets last week despite the f- absence of Sutton. Marvin Mims is banged up, but should get an opportunity. Austin Eckler. I think he's okay in this one. I, I do he's, too. I, I know Austin Eckler's been disappointing, and it's probably irrelevant because if you've had him, you might not be in the championship based on the last month or so. But the matchup is good. The opportunity is good. And I, I think he's going to come through in championship week. Now, Keenan Allen, Joshua Palmer, probably not playing. So, Gerald Everett, yeah, really like him for fantasy. Yep. Uh, On the course of the season, the, the Broncos are about as good as it gets over the last six weeks. They are as good as it gets for a matchup for tight end. He is both Mr. Necessary, eight targets in three straight weeks, and it's it's a perfect matchup for him. So I think Gerald Everett is like he's my go-to absolute stream of the week type of player, even in championships. I'm mostly avoiding – like I like the Broncos' defense the most this week. I like them at home against the Easton Stick with no wideouts. Mm-hmm. I think that the Broncos' defense is a really solid play. On their offensive side of the ball, like it's – like Javante, yeah, Javante should be good. Um, we are we don't done, know about Cortland there? Sutton. Cortland Sutton is someone that I would want to play. Like if he was activated and and passed through the concussion protocol, I would play him. We saw monstrous games from Javante Adams last year with Jared Stidham um, in a in a surprise matchup against San Francisco, where Stidham threw for like three hundred and three. Um, Stidham is Stidham is also pretty interesting I mean if you're talking about like a DFS dart throw uh, I'm not going to rely on him in a championship week but he's he's put up big performances last year his two games seven rushing attempts both games so he's you know uh, on a super like flex a DFS level. kind of yeah. quarterback that you have on your roster he has he was my DFS quarterback all week but I did pivot did you realize that Javante has Negative receiving yards in two straight games. Yeah, the Javante discussion heading into next year is going to be a very interesting one because uh, adjusting expectations, I think, is the new. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's just, the movie coming out for Javante Williams. And crossing your fingers and hoping. Cincinnati's eight and seven. The Chiefs are nine and six. The game's in Arrowhead. It's an afternoon game. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Kansas City minus six and a half. The over under is forty four. And here we are, the struggling Kansas City offense and Matt Nagy and Andy Reid and no wide receivers. Uh, since the bye week, Kansas City is 2-4 and four record-wise. They've covered this spread one time, and that is kind of shocking. You have a matchup here that seems ideal, a bad defense, a get-right game for Patrick Mahomes. I made him a start of the week with Travis Kelsey. Are you guys in on that narrative, or, or is there a – like what's the per- percentage chance of continued disappointment for this offense? I'd put it pretty low. Like I'm I'm with you that I think that this is a get-right game for the offense. If you have Mahomes, I'm not, I'm not bailing on him for this matchup in championship week. Same for Travis Kelsey. Uh, I mean, the the question is what – what does the offense look like with the running back situation? We're not expecting Pacheco to play with the concussion. And I think e- even if – so if Clyde's the, the main guy, I still think that the passing volume actually goes up a little bit. Not out of control, but they, they try and throw a little bit more because they've been – with Pacheco at the helm, they've been you know, far more balanced and sometimes even a run-heavy team. Uh, so I'm still good with Patrick Mahomes. And if, um, if Clyde, I said at the top, if Clyde is good to go, I'm playing him against the Bengals. Anything to add, Jason? Uh, no, I, I I echo everything Mike said. I think it will Anything be to more subtract? pass heavy. No, I, I I love what you said. Mike. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Rashi Rice, the yeah. targets were there last week, yep. so he's he's in most of your lineups. Kadarius Tony should be back. Justin Watson, MVS. Uh, don't forget Justin Ross. Don't forget. Uh, Richie James. So there will be a seven six pack again. No, thank you. Yeah, it's 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 Rushy Rice and check out. And yeah, and obviously Kelsey on the other side. Jamar Chase. He was limited. He was also trash talking the KC secondary mm-hmm. like a man that's going to play some yeah, football. Jamar was really poking the bear. It it did <laughs> seem though like when you watch that interview, it's like this sounds like someone that's playing this week. He was talking about this matchup and 
So is uh, it a trap with the way Legarius Sneed oh, has played? It's a trap, but it's it's a beautiful, elaborate, well laid out trap that I am going to step into. <laughs> so you're putting because <laughs> so like, oh. you have this decision, right? Yeah. You have Zay Flowers. Yeah, you have Jamar Chase. Tough matchup for wide receivers against Legarius Sneed. Jamar Chase coming off of an injury with a backup quarterback. He will be in your lineup over Zay Flowers? Uh, more than likely, but I also... He'd be in mine over Zay Flowers, like, too. I'm also a massive underdog. So Huge. The way, the, the way that I see Zay Flowers' ceiling, which Zay Flowers has hit ceiling in like three of the last four games, but Zay Flowers is not a 152 touchdown Chase guy is a one-touch right. guy. Yes. That's, the, that's what's beautiful about it. Yeah. He's had some games with Browning where you're like, nothing's happening, and then all of a sudden, 70-yard touchdown. I... Look, I wouldn't blame anybody for putting the guy they drafted top five into your lineup for a championship game. Yeah, yeah, he'll he'll probably be in most people's lineups if he's active. If he's active, does that push you away from T. Higgins, or does that make you think, hey, no, Legarius Sneed's going to be on? Okay. Yeah. yeah, Higgins is. is it pushes you away of Tyler Boyd. Yes, yes, yes. And then Joe Mixon, we talked about him. You know, he's yeah, going to have opportunities. Get that volume. Sunday night football, Brooks. Is this the last game of championship week? Yeah, it is. Green Bay. Minnesota, both teams seven and eight. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Minnesota minus one at home, the over under forty three and a half. Man, this game is massive for these teams. Well, Jaron Hall getting the start, rookie from BYU, and got knocked out real early in his one opportunity after Cousins went down. In that game, uh what did he play, like uh, 15% of yeah. snaps? and he then was, He was already running, though. He was running a little bit, a couple he couple might, carries. That's what got him knocked out. Yeah, so he might <laughs> run less. Jordan Love on the other side. Minnesota beat him 24-10 at Lambeau. The Minnesota defense is very good. They're at home. I think they'll be ready to play in this one. It's prime time under the lights for uh, Jordan Love, who's been, you know, Pretty good overall when you average it all out, but the the swings have been s severe. Christian Watson shouldn't be out there. What are we expecting from this one? Give me the main decisions for championship teams. Well, the main decisions are going to be like Ty Chandler, Justin Jefferson, uh, Aaron Jones. Th those are those are the the uh, real Jeff big ones. Jefferson's I, not a decision. He's well, a, Jefferson's in, yeah. but I do think that Jaron Hall starting being a mobile quarterback and being off the heels of basically opening it up for Nick Mullins they have they, they brought in Mullins and they let him throw and he was great for fantasy Jordan Addison had a monster game Justin Jefferson had a monster game but he threw a bunch of picks and now they said no we're not winning games that way our defense is really good we're going to go to the rookie and so my anticipation despite the fact that this coaching staff has already opened it up for quarterbacks to come in and push the ball downfield is a little bit of fear that that's going to happen and that they're going to be more conservative run the ball more could be good for Ty Chandler throw the ball less could be bad for Justin Jefferson or those wanting you know KJ Osborne was a big pickup this week because of the injuries to Jordan Addison who was a uh, limited participant on Thursday and Hawkinson who's on IR um, like Osborne's out to me now he's not someone I'm starting in championship week yeah it's tough because the, the, the Packers' defense is just so vulnerable. And the fact that they put this game with both teams at over 20 points, I, I'm with you, though. I wouldn't be turning to Osborne without knowing what Jaron Hall brings to the table. So that makes sense. And so it makes Jefferson, Ty Chandler. We don't know how many snaps Madison will receive. Uh, has he been practicing in full this week? Uh, last I saw was limited. Limited. Okay, yeah. so they're still you know, watching – uh, his snaps in practice. Aaron Jones was great last week. I think you play him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yep. no way you're not going to play Aaron Jones. So, 24 opportunities, 127 rushing yards last week. Tucker, Kraft, or Durham Smythe? Ooh. Uh, Smythe. I did it, guys. <laughs> I, I persuaded somebody <laughs> in this world to make a decision. Uh, the Vikings but, defense is, is really good. But for, for NFL fans, uh, just – you know, paying attention to the game, the the winner of this game, essentially their playoff percentage chance hit is about fifty. If they lose, though, it plummets to four percent and one or one percent for the pack. So, give me the so call. Who wins the game? I will take. Man, um, 
because it's wow, it's Minnesota minus one. So we basically have a pick 'em. I will take Minnesota to win the game. That's where I'm on. I'm, I'm going on, so. Green Bay. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's not. It, it's not an almost upset because it's so a pick 'em game. But if, I'll take Green Bay. If Green Bay wins, does that mean that uh, this is a good Jordan Love game? I mean, would you start Jordan Love? My, I what I really think is going to happen here is a, no, I like Tua versus Jordan Love. I'd just play Tua. Okay. Yeah, I like the over under in that Can game. Can you believe Jordan Love is the quarterback six? Yeah, on I, th the I think season. Jordan Love will be fine. It this seems week. unfair. It, I think he'll be fine. It seems impossible. Yeah. Like but, when you have that many, just bad games. Black games. You should not be allowed there. Couple updates for you, Hollywood Brown, season-ending IR. Who cares? It's about he's, time. He's been on IR in our minds for weeks. Kyler Murray back at practice should be fine to play with the illness. Josh Jacobs will be a game time decision for week 17 like he was last week. All right. Ezekiel Elliott returned to Patriots practice on Friday. How about back Zay from Flowers? The illness. Nothing on Zay Flowers. Okay. Time to move on. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. I had this moment just now where I thought I'd be able to see my lineup, and then I remembered I'm the shame again. So we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I have decided I'm... to match your third place finish, Mike, with another one. Or, sorry, your three in a row. Yeah. With three in a row myself. Jason sitting here in the, uh, what do they call that? The Not the bird's nest. I think it's the throne. Yeah, we'll go with throne. <laughs> The crow's nest? Is that what you were going? No. Or are you trying to do something a... seat? It's not the hot seat. Nobody over there in Deucer's Alley the, knows what I'm talking about. The the, the something seat. The wind seat of power. Winter's no, not the seat? seat of power. I'll. You dive into that. I'll figure that out right. while I suffer. I don't know what you're talking about. Wheel of shame. All right, spin the stupid wheel. <laughs> I am excited here. So we got Viking, Safety First, Pizza Face, Megalashame. <laughs> Megalashame. That's, that's not okay. I don't want to hear Megalashame. Megalashame. <laughs> Megalashame. It's just Baby Shark. Yeah, it's, it's a Megalodon. He's, he's stupid shark face. <laughs> Another, I made it easy on him this week because another week. Next, I'm doing this because that way I can talk. Next yeah. week, uh, next week. Uh, it's marshmallow face again, guys. If you if you lose <laughs> next oh, week, Christmas. Andy, and you're the first ever four Pete. Yeah, don't do it. You don't want to do it. I'm no. just saying. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm rooting for your lineup, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Let's start at the quarterback position where I probably rotated through about thirty of them. I'm going Derek Carr, 5,500 against Carr, Tampa Bay. 5,500. I have Derek Carr, 5,500. Yeah, w when looking at the quarterbacks, I really wanted to, you know, let's just YOLO, let's live and put like Stidham in mm -hmm. or something. And just the price difference was it's, too small. It's not enough to make a huge impact in your lineup. So Derek Carr at that price point. What happens if we all have the same exact lineup? Do I get shamed again? Yeah, we all do, but yours will be the worst. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, running backs then, guys. Christian McCaffrey. Yep. 9,600. Do we all have him? Yeah. If you don't have Christian McCaffrey in a cash game, or majors. probably in, in any game, I don't know how you win. So I'll have Christian McCaffrey, and then uh, my second running back is DeAndre Swift at 6,500. DeAndre Swift. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, I have. Ooh, are you riding without Swift? I do not have DeAndre Swift. Against I, the Cardinals? I know. I had him in my lineup there in my we flex go. for a while. But my running back is. Uh, Kyron Williams yeah, okay. at 8,300 against the New York Giants. Oh, you got to be naked everywhere else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that is – Christian McCaffrey I tried to do that Kyron, I tried, and I forced it to happen. So I got I got some yucky butt in my lineup soon. <laughs> <laughs> some it, yucky butt. Yeah. All right. My wide, rece <laughs> my wide receivers. Yucky butt? Yucky mm -hmm. butt. That's, That's a good one. That's a good word. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> my wide receivers this week, Puka Nakua, 7,900. Chris Olave, mm, 6,800. Okay. 6, right. And uh, Richie James Jr., the 3,000 in my lineup. All right. I also have Puka Nakua at 7,900. I didn't want to go both of the uh, Saints wide receivers. So I have Rashid Shaheed mm. at 4,600. And then Rashid Rice 
at a very nice 6,900 against the Cincinnati Bengals at home. Okay, well, I do have the stack with Christian Olave. Uh, Chris Olave is in there at 6,800. I've got JSN, Jackson Smith, Najigba at uh, 4,800. And here's my yucky butt. In Jigba. In Jigba, yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah, blame David. Um, <laughs> Marvin Mims Jr. Woo, baby! If, I hope Cortland Sutton is not playing. I, he was originally a Stidham Marvin Mims stack <laughs> just to get nasty. But uh, I left Marvin Mims in there. So Marvin Mims, JSN, and Chris Olave. All right. I'm sorry, let me get out of the shark mask. <laughs> My tight end, I mentioned it, Durham Smythe, 2,900 for yeah. Miami against Baltimore. My flex position is a conditional one. It is Zamir White for 5,100. If Josh Jacobs is active, it is it becomes magically, it transforms into Drake London immediately okay. at 5,000. Right. Okay. And then my defense is the Carolina Panthers at 2,700 against maybe C.J. Beathard or maybe a banged-up Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville. Okay. All right, I have at tight end Gerald Everett, kind of my streamer option of the week at 3,500. At flex, I too have Zamir White at 5,100. My pivot option, should Josh Jacobs be active, will be Noah Brown uh, at 50, same price. And then I have the defense you said is your favorite of the week, Andy, the Broncos at 2,900 against Easton Stick at home. I have, this is where the butt gets yucky for me. Uh, the cardio king himself, Mr. Cade Otten, at 3,100. And the flex, Juwan Johnson. So I will have that Derek Carr. Dual tight end set? Yep. 12 personnel? Yep. 3,400 for Juwan Johnson. And then I'm going with the Patriots defense against the Buffalo Bills in what will probably be a gigantic mistake. However... <laughs> It's at least going to the, – the projection is freezing temperatures. My, my favorite part of you saying you're going with them is like you had a choice. <laughs> you are, I, know well, the, I think the Patriots are the I second did. cheapest of the week, aren't they? I, I did. I actually, I yeah, have, they are. I, I, have, I had them in for a long I, time. I did too, yeah. I have $200 left over, and so it's either – well, I could go the Cardinals. Well, that's not a good one. Or the Giants against the Rams. It's, no, I'll take someone who – yeah, divisional could, could actually uh, surprise. Yeah, divisional yeah. game. Yeah, I get it. All right, all right, great. I like how taking it easy on me is making me look like a ridiculous shark head. But thank you. It's fun. Uh, that was Fantasy Face Off presented by DraftKings. Download the DraftKings app now and use the promo code Ballers. New customers can play free for a share of millions in prizes with your first five dollar deposit. All right, and big news. Should have said it at the top. I will be here for Sunday Live. So, championship week, if you want to come tilt with me, I'll be here one hour before kickoff uh, for about 30 minutes chatting with you, answering questions, going through all of the latest news, updates, and information because, look, as you get more info, all these practice reports, you want to react to them, get the right guys into your lineup ahead of championship week, that'll do it. Take care, everybody. Good luck. See you on Sunday Live. Oh, boy. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.